It's so sad Steve Jobs died of living. I missed the part where that's my problem. Watchmen is one of my favorite comic book movies. I like that it breaks down the superhero genre and turns it on its head. And visually, it's very stunning. 11 years later, and it still looks great. It's also a very decisive film amongst fans. Zack Snyder seems to have a knack for that. Save Martha! Why did you say that name? People seem to either love it or hate it, but I'm not here to critique the film. Instead, I'm here to tell you which version of the movie you should watch and discuss the differences between each one, from what's in the movie itself to what's included in the special features. There are three cuts of this movie, and each not only had different runtimes, but different special features, and have been released a dozen times with different box arts and in collections. And when searching for this movie online, it could get confusing by seeing all the different options. For example, you could get the theatrical cut on its own or one of these DVD combo packs like I got. There's the full screen edition, widescreen edition, it was even packaged with the video game, The End Is Nigh, which I did a review on, check it out. And for the director's cut, there's things like the Dr. Manhattan edition, Rorschach edition, Archie's custom statue that holds the disc in the base, the Blu-ray steelbook, and the ultimate edition you can buy on its own or in a giant collector's box. It seems almost every retailer had their own custom case or cover. I haven't seen a movie have so many different alternate covers, cases, artworks, and collections. And hell, while you're looking for the Watchmen movie, you'll eventually run into the motion comic, Tales of the Black Freighter, Under the Hood. And for newcomers, this could be confusing. I'll explain more with these are later on. But a thing that remains the same between all this is that there are three cuts of the movie. Theatrical, director's cut, and ultimate cut. So let's go over the differences between each cut and look at the different special features you get. Then I'll recommend which version you should watch. It's so sad that Jobs died of so let's go ahead and get the theatrical cut out of the way first. It clocks in at 2 hours and 42 minutes and the DVD has no special features. It's the shortest version and it's pretty straightforward. Watchmen is a big story and there's a lot of characters to cover, and the theatrical cut just focuses on trying to get the story across. As you'll see in a little bit, there are a lot of scenes that are cut short or removed entirely from the theatrical version that really focus on the character development. But on the flip side, there are some scenes that are cut short that don't impact the movie at all, and those few scenes make sense of why they weren't included. I'll also go over some of those in a bit. So yeah, theatrical cut, very base, very vanilla, very straightforward. Who the hell is Steve Jobs? The director's cut is 3 hours long, 20 minutes longer than theatrical. A lot of the extra footage consists of more dialogue from pre-existing scenes in the theatrical version, making them anywhere from like 5 to 30 seconds longer. A lot of little things like this. I can't help him. You should have known all you needed was a nice pair of legs to motivate you. You're such an asshole, Rorschach. Spare me indignation. And also these little bits of dialogue were cut. Even Adrian Veidt, possible homosexual, must investigate further. My son's a police officer, you fucking faggots! I wonder why. Oh nigga, you gay! And there's also a few longer shots of Dan walking home in the rain, or Rorschach outside the comedian's funeral, as well as some more narration from Rorschach throughout the movie. Like I mentioned earlier, there were some scenes that were cut short that I understand why, because they don't really add a whole lot or change or affect anything. Some extra lines from the rioters, Moloch entering his home, the doctor saying I can't help him. These are nice to have, but not very important. But there are some scenes that I think are important, like the death of the first Night Owl and Dan's reaction to it. Because earlier in this cut of the movie, he explains that Night Owl was his hero, and really inspired him when he was a kid, so much so that he became the second one when he grew up. Also, Rorschach fighting the police in the beginning and gathering his gear from the alley where he sees a mugging in progress are important scenes because it shows more on how he operates, even after superheroes are outlawed. And so is the scene where he explains why he never compromises. There's also scenes that help develop the characters, like Rorschach asking a newsstand guy about a right-wing magazine, to help drive home the fact that he's mainly conservative. There's also a flashback scene with Silk Spectre 2 and the comedian, showing a bit more about their relationship. Dr. Manhattan also had a few scenes cut out, there's some extra lines of dialogue and his monologues and his flashback scene is longer. There are a lot of little things that have been cut and I can't explain them all here so I'll leave a link for you to check it out. This wiki explains basically all the extra footage and where they take place in the movie. Now let's talk about special features because you get a lot. First you get a featurette explaining the original comic and how it impacted the comic book world. Then a section on real life vigilantes. Next you get a behind the scenes featurette showing how they make the sets and costumes. And then you get a music video by My Chemical Romance that Zack Snyder directed. And finally you get maximum movie mode. Now this is pretty interesting. Basically you play the movie and as you watch various behind the scenes clips and images will appear on screen, along with some pieces of trivia. And there are times when the movie will shrink and Zack Snyder himself will come on screen and explain to you how they did certain things. It's pretty damn interesting. So that's the director's cut of Watchmen, it's a pretty damn solid package. Lick my balls. The ultimate cut, which is 3 hours and 35 minutes long. Damn! 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 
This is currently Snyder's longest film to date, but it's going to be beaten by Justice League. So the ultimate cut is basically the director's cut, but it has Tales of the Black Freighter spliced in. Now, what is Tales of the Black Freighter? It's a comic that's in the story of Watchmen that's basically an allegory for Adrian's plan and actions of certain characters. At certain moments throughout the movie, it will cut to a kid reading at a newsstand and then it turns into a short animated cartoon. Now, besides some extra scenes at the newsstand and Tales of the Black Freighter, it has all the same scenes as the director's cut. Now let's move on to the bonus content. Now you figure if you got the ultimate cut, you will get the same special features as the director's cut and more, but that's not the case here. You do get most of it, but you don't get maximum movement mode, that's only for the director's cut. You do instead get two new featurettes now in the director's cut called Under the Hood and Story Within a Story, The Books of Watchmen. Now let's go over what Under the Hood is. The first Night Owl wrote an autobiography after he retired and exposed a lot about the superheroes he worked with. You can see this book in the background of a few scenes and it's in the intro. So this is a fake documentary about the first Night Owl and it mainly adds more to the depth and lore of the world of Watchmen, focuses a lot on the Minutemen. Unlike Tales of the Black Freighter, it's not sprinkled into the movie, which is fine because I can't think of a way of how they would be able to splice this into the movie. But regardless, it's still pretty cool. Now Story Within the Story is a featurette that covers Under the Hood and Tales of the Black Freighter and how they brought them to life in the movie. I've also seen some collections of the Ultimate Cut have the motion comic on its own disc, so I believe that's only in the box set. They also include a digital copy of the theatrical cut. The only disadvantage besides not having maximum movie mode is that there isn't an option to watch the movie without Tales of the Black Freighter spliced in. So if you wanted to watch just a three hour director's cut, you would have to buy that copy too or skip through these scenes when they come up. Also, I would like to note that you can actually buy Tales of the Black Freighter separately and it's usually bundled with Under the Hood. Same thing with the motion comic, you can buy that separately as well. Oh, and it seems there are actually two commentary tracks on the Ultimate Cut, one from Zack Snyder and the other from Dave Givens. I just found that out, so that's pretty cool. So there you have it, those are the three different versions of Watchmen. I'm pretty certain that I got everything, but there's probably a different collection or bundle or box set out there that I missed. I wouldn't be surprised if there is. So here are my recommendations for which ones you should watch. For first time viewers, I personally recommend the director's cut. Those extra 20 minutes are great for character development and adds more detail to really flesh out the world of Watchmen. But if you're not a fan of movies being three hours long, then I recommend the theatrical cut, that way you can at least experience the story. And if you enjoyed it and you're really intrigued by it, then watch the director's cut. But if long movies don't bother you, go ahead and watch the director's cut because you get a really nice full experience. And I say watch the Ultimate Edition if you're a hardcore fan of the comic, it's the closest to the source material you're gonna get in terms of being filmed, and it comes with so much bonus content. Now a lot of fans prefer the Director's Cut over the Ultimate Cut because they think the Black Freighter sections pull away from the main story too much, and maybe you don't think that the animated stuff mixes well with the live action footage, but it really comes down to your preference. I say watch the Director's Cut first, and if you enjoyed it and want more of it, then go ahead and watch the Ultimate Cut. Now it's time to see which version the man himself recommends, Zack Snyder. I think the, the director's cut, look, I think if you're a crazy fan, which is fine, the director's cut with the Black Freighter is really the, you know, sort of pure comic book freak out. But for me, the director's cut without the Black Freighter is this sort of, because it was never designed, I never designed the movie. Like, we, we did the Black Freighter sort of separately, I wanted to do it, but we didn't really design it to be intercut into the film, and we, so we had to kind of jerry-rig it in, so it was never... 100 I mean though it goes in pretty pretty nicely I just I feel I I, I never felt like 100% that it was like you know completely organic um so for me the director's cut is really the you know which has the Hollis's death and other things like that that's right, gonna do it for the video guys I hope you enjoyed if you did go ahead and drop a like on it and go ahead leave a comment and let me know what do you think the best version of Watchmen is which is your favorite cut and which version do you recommend fans seeing for the first time looking forward to reading your comments so thanks for watching I'll catch you next time the last son of Krypton poses as much a threat to me as its last termite